Hello, good morning to everybody in North America and Canada and to everyone else looking in from around the world. And welcome to the September RD Masterclass from the US Trail Running Conference. Before we dive into this month's session, we're excited to bring you news on the 2024 US Trail Running Conference that takes place in Knoxville, Tennessee, October the 23rd to the 25th, 2024. We encourage you to join, join us for this unique opportunity. There we go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we encourage you to join us for this unique opportunity to spend three days with some of the best race directors and event organizers from North America and Canada. The conference represents terrific value with education, inspiration, networking, and an expo with services and products designed to help you put on great races. An RD mentor program and a varied and broad content that will appeal to all comers. We are running a summer special discount offer at this moment of 20% off our standard pricing for a limited time for anyone out there that hasn't yet registered. So feel free to email me at terry at ustrailrunningconference.com to talk about your race and see if our conference will be a good fit for you. Details of the offer are on the scrolling banner below. So feel free to reach out to me if you do want to take advantage of that offer. Um, we look forward to seeing you in Knoxville, Tennessee. How many folks out there will be seeing us in Knoxville? So that's a, that's a question there from, uh, um, from any. So yeah, feel free everybody out there to use the, uh, use the comments or the private chat. Um, so um, before I get to introduce our wonderful panelists here, um, I just want to uh, say a big shout out to our presenting sponsor. Um, so Marathon Printing are our presenting sponsor. They're a family owned company that specializes in producing custom printed items for endurance sports. And race bibs are their most popular item, either custom printed or stock bibs. Marathon Printing also supply vital accessories for race directors like pins, bags, and pennant flags, as well as postcards, business cards, brochures, bumper stickers, and labels. And they also supply the lanyards for our conference as well. They have been a loyal supporter of the US Trail Running Conference since 2015, and are also an event standard partner for our friends and colleagues at ATRA. We are very grateful to Ryan Zirk and the team at Marathon Printing for their support of this webinar series. So visit Marathon Printing or email sales at marathononline.com. And really with their support, we are able to, uh, to make these webinars free for everybody to access. So um, without their support, we'd have to be charging you. So uh, um, yeah, so thank you to everybody that's uh, out there live. And we'd like to try, so we are excited to have our focus for this final RD Masterclass webinar in our series in 2024 on photography in the sport. Specifically, <clears throat> excuse me, how photography can help you supercharge your race or event using the creative power of images to respectfully grow and promote a race or event. And we are honored to have three amazing photographers that are all stars in the trail running community. What is this these photographers have to share important? Each of them have had their own unique experience of viewing trail races from the outside. For race directors and event organizers, that isn't something that you generally get to experience. Probably every race director is interested in how they can grow their event. A reminder that around 80% of what we learn from the world around us is due to perception, learning, cognition, and activities that are mediated through vision. Photography is about so much more than mere pictures. And I'm very excited to introduce our three panelists for this session, Emily Cameron from CameronCreativeCo.com, Kevin Youngblood from KVLV Photography, and Anastasia Wild from AnastasiaWild.com. So panelists, if you could, um, Emily, if we can start with you, um, if you could oh, introduce God. yourself, um, and if you could start just telling us a little bit about yourself, how long have you been a photographer, um, what is the race or event that you most enjoyed your photo photographic experience at? And what is your favorite camera? Mm, um, my name is Emily Cameron. Uh, I have been a photographer full time since January of 2023. 
Uh, and I actually shot my first tra trail race in May of 2023. So I'm relatively new to this world. Um, I would say my favorite event that I've shot uh, would probably be Western States last year. Uh, that was an absolutely, it's actually where I met. Well, I met Anastasia at Broken Arrow and then Kevin I met at Western States. Um, but yeah, that was an incredible experience. And then my favorite camera would be my, my Sony A1. Um, it's the powerhouse and it does it all. So. Wow. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Emily. Um, Kevin, you're next up. If you could, uh, the same questions for you, my friend. So I started shooting back in 2018. It's the first time I picked up a camera. Uh, one of the local race directors asked me to shoot one of the races because they were in need of a photographer. So that's why I started. Um, I guess my favorite race will be Western States. It's just that whole atmosphere and experience is just amazing. And meeting new people and other photographers was great. Um, I love Canon cameras. So I am currently using the R6 as my go-to. Cool, cool. Wonderful. Thank you, Kevin. Anastasia, last up, if you don't mind the same questions for yeah. you too. Um, I started photographing back in 2018, but um, focused on ultra running in um, 2021, no, 2020. Um, and um, favorite race, that's a tough one. Uh, I shoot a <laughs> lot of races. So I feel like uh, maybe I'll do two because our Montana races are really special to me. So um, the Crazy Mountain 100 and I just photographed the rut last weekend. Um, and then um, I love my Z9, so Nikon. I love that we're all on different systems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They all do I the same how, stuff. I wondered how that would work out. I, I thought like three, three, three people all on the same brand. No, that's probably not going to happen. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so actually, another question I just thought of off the top of my head. So this is an additional piece before we get going on the other questions. But um, um, how how much for, for those people out there, how much is your um, camera equipment probably worth? Um, Anastasia, Anastasia, if you want to go first and we'll do reverse order. Uh, are we talking just one camera? Right. <laughs> no, let's go, the, let's go the whole gamut. Throw Ooh. everything in. Uh, I'm probably like, 35,000 in for all my camera stuff, camera okay. lights, stands. Yeah. Right. That's some investment. Kevin? Yeah. yeah. If we're talking lights and everything, I'd probably be not that much, but probably around 10,000. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Emily, how about yourself? I'm somewhere between the two of them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would say I would say anywhere from twenty to thirty thousand in with all of it. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just it, it just suddenly struck me that it's it's like money people. I ha I had no idea um, that uh, I was thinking probably more in line with uh, with Kevin. But uh, um, yeah, I had no idea kind of how much the the price of cameras like that that are and uh, and the equipment like that is. So so it's a it's a major investment. So um, yeah, thank you guys. Wow. Okay. So, um, I've got some, I've got some questions that we, uh, um, that we set up beforehand. Um, and, uh, what I'll do is, um, um, we've got about oh, several questions to run through. So, um, so we'll get rolling now. The, um, um, so the idea is to, uh, um, to, to really help any race directors, event organizers out there, as I said, to uh, um, to kind of understand how photography, the images that you use for your race can actually help your event. And so um, so interested to uh, really excited about what these three guys are going to share with us. So the first question. So how have you seen trail running develop through the lens of your camera over the years? You have been ph photographing and photographing races and events. So Kevin, if you want to kick off first on that one. How have I seen things change? Um, I, I feel like races are getting a lot bigger, even locally. Uh, and there's a lot more, uh, a lot more photographers and video people out there, especially at the bigger, well-known races. Um, 
which is a good thing for, I guess, as talking to race directors because they're getting more, um, they're getting seen more. So they're getting more publicity and all that. So that part has really um, increased. Um, and I think with that is for photographers, it's, it's a good thing because it challenges us more. Um, but at the same time, we get to meet more other great photographers and creators and learn more from each other. So, yeah. Cool, cool. That's good. Emily, thank you. Would you like to go next? Sure. Uh, I would say in the year and a half that I've been kind of around the sport and following it for a few more years, I, I suppose, um, I think I've seen like a shift in maybe trail running from being a, a personal pursuit and seeing like a personal pursuit of what your limit is as an individual runner to like the community purpose and the shared experience of what a race is. And I think kind of like what Kevin said, because we have so many amazing creatives within the sport, um, it's allowing us to see stories that may not have been told otherwise. Um, and you see the stories of not only the individual kind of limits that are being reached, but also the community stories that I think are just as spectacular. Uh, so I think that's really special. Mm, cool, good answer. Thank you, Emily. Um, Anastasia. Yeah, I think that um, trail running has gotten a little bit more maybe commercialized over the last few years. I think um, a lot of sponsors are willing to put a little bit more money into some of the races and their athletes. Um, and so it, it even with the live streaming over the last couple of years, I feel like there's been this like huge uh, kick up in viewership as well. Um, and so I just think overall, it's um, more people are getting into it. There's a lot more media, um, but it's pretty fun because you go from race to race and you kind of get to see the same people. So it's like a mini reunion every time. So <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Yeah, that, that community that you've touched on already is, is, is um, yeah, I have a real sense. I mean, I think that was, that's always been there. Um, but I think Emily and, and Kevin, as you were saying, that it's, it's now, now you have an opportunity um, to share more about the community. Um, and, and I think live streaming is a, um, uh, is a really important, you know, piece of that um, as well. So it's, uh, it's very exciting how, how these things are developing. Um, of course, the other side is that, do we want the sport to become more and more and more commercialized? So, you know, it, it's like, do, do we, do we get to a point where it's like, oh man, this is, this is, this is beyond what we, what we really wanted. We've kind of, we kind of lost the, um, the grassroots feel. Um, and, and so, yeah, have you, I mean, um, have you guys been to, obviously Western States is a, um, uh, you know, relatively small race in terms of numbers of people. Um, so, you know, something like UTMB, for example, in, in Europe is, you know, is, is way, way bigger. Um, and, you know, so have you, have you had the opportunity to, um, to experience any of those kind of races and seen, and had, uh, um, yeah, and seen different values or, um, yeah, any concerns on that level? Yeah, any, anybody, okay. anybody in? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, I got, uh, the chance to be at Western States last year. Um, and then, um, I wasn't at UTMB as an official photographer, but I did get to go and just kind of experience the um, mm. atmosphere and being, uh, a very quiet, typically, um, uh, uh, not, oh, introverted person. Um, it was very overwhelming. I think just like the decibel of the sound is just always um, super high and there's just so much going on. Um, but it, it's really fun too, because everybody comes together. Trail people are some of the nicest people I've ever met. Everybody's just so kind and helpful. Um, so it, it feels like a little bit of like a celebration of our community. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Kevin, any any more thoughts on on that on that subject? Um, I agree, I, but I guess if there's any down part is there's almost too I don't say too many media. It seems like there's like for every athlete there's like five people surrounding them, especially the bigger athletes because their sponsors want footage and they're gonna do a story, which are also awesome. Because it, you know, it tells a story about that community or or whatever. But 
it, it's getting big to the point where yeah, each there's almost five to one media to uh, runner athlete. But again, it's a fun environment, though. It's, it's kind of awesome to see everybody chasing that big group of people like the paparazzi chasing one athlete down. And then once they leave, here comes another athlete and everybody's swarming around them. So that part, you get the adrenaline going and you, it's it's a fun event. Right, right, right. Emily, any, th any thoughts on that same concern? Um, I was just in Chamonix, not for UTMB, but I was there three weeks prior. So... I got to chat with a few kind of locals that have lived there for like 30 years. Um, yeah. And so I kind of chatted with them to see what their thoughts on UTMB were. Uh, and it was kind of interesting, mixed mixed uh, responses, but uh, just kind of knowing that they do, a lot of them just leave because they say it's too overwhelming to have such a large event. Um, and you would think that to me, I was like, oh, the community really like backs this and like they want this embedded within it. But mm -hmm. I'm not sure, and I've never witnessed it, so I don't know. Like like Anastasia said, it. I'm sure it's absolutely nuts. Um, but it is interesting from a local standpoint to see what these people really truly feel about something that that has become so commercialized. I think over the past little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it, it's. I'm. I. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how long it would be before we get to that kind of level in, in the US, for example. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, um, yeah, it would be interesting to kind of keep um, uh, keep kind of tabs and a check on uh, um, on things to, to make sure we're keeping uh, keeping things real. Okay, thank you so much for that. Um, and sorry to throw that question at you. Um, okay, so now we're getting to kind of uh, um, nitty gritty now. Can you share three or four top factors that race directors can be mindful of when selecting images to market the re their race or event. And so I suggested that uh, um, that our, our experts here could uh, um, could bring along some photographs to to kind of illustrate this. Um, so Anastasia, do you want to uh, um, do you want to head off on this one and, uh, and be first up? Sure. Um, I am just going to use the rut as an example, just because that just got over for me on Sunday, so it's the freshest in my mind. But um, I think first and foremost, it's super important for race directors to kind of know what they want to market. Um, so that's been really helpful to know, oh, we have a hole in imagery of people interacting together, or we need more imagery of um, just like wide landscapes that we can use for like a website banner. So if you kind of have an idea of what you're missing or what you need, that makes our job a lot easier because those things happen. Um, it's just a matter of us focusing on it. So um, I can kind of show some of uh, the things that um, I just put together very quickly from this weekend. Uh, let's see. Well, this is hot off the press here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so um, I think it's important to, you know, to showcase a lot of the landscape. Like this year we had snow at the rut, which we hadn't had for quite a few years. So it was really important to kind of showcase that. Um, and so, you know, there, you, this event has so much energy around it. So for people to be excited um, and to showcase the snow, and then this was the first uh, last year they couldn't get to the top of the mountain. So, you know, they could have spectators up uh, on top of Lone Peak um, and then just these like beautiful vistas with, you know, teeny tiny runner. And then something that was important to Mike, the race director, was the like close up emotional shots um, at the finish line. And so it, Mike, having known what he was kind of looking for, it was easy for me to just plug myself in. Um, and kind of, you know, showcase the event a little bit. So, but yeah, I feel like if you have a, a little bit of a variety of imagery as well. So even in that sample, there was like a tight, medium, wide. Um, and so, yeah, so you can kind of get in a little bit closer. So you feel like you're connecting with another human and their joy um, to then also like just seeing like the grandeur of the landscape, so. Mm. Cool, cool. Thank you, Anastasia. Um, yeah, it looks beautiful, didn't it? What a <laughs> awesome. Yeah, 
yeah, snow up there. Um, amazing. Um, yeah, so it it um, um, it must be hard to um, to really know what what people are looking for necessarily in your race, um, unless they've said that specifically. Um, so I guess what you said in terms of having a variety of different um, mm -hmm. different imagery. So rather than kind of stick to one one kind of type and and have a variety of imagery, I think is probably really important. Um, okay, um, Kevin, do you do you want to go next up for this one? Yeah, um, I'm. Let's see, how do we share? So if you do present at the bottom, okay, and then. Can you see that? No, not yet. No. Oh. Um, so it should. Um, I think it's. It gives you an option to share like a window or. Got it. Okay. Are you able to see that? Yep. Yep. We got it up. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I. I like what. Um... To like again, if you're for race directors, I think they should show the environment that the runners are going to run in. So again, the wide angles, like this is the Valley of Fire, so they have an idea of what they're running in. And again, like she was saying, get a tight shot of that same person. Um, but I, my big thing is always trying to get a wide shot just to get the whole environment. And kind of an idea of what the person or the runners are going to be running in, and also talking to, as she was saying, race directors about what they want. So if it's a race that they're highlighting the city, but you're on the, on a trail, you want something that shows the views that you're going to get of the city, um, and the different environments like this race usually it doesn't snow, but happened to snow this year. Um, people having fun at races and just the community. Um, this race was a <laughs> sunflower race. So he knew there was going to be a guy dressed up as a sunflower. So he's like, make sure you kind of get him. And again, same race, family friendly, have your family out there. Everybody's dressed up in their sunflower. Also, if you want to get more diverse um, athletes, like these are Achilles athletes, which are blind or visually impaired athletes. So you want to show that so people know that, oh, this race is open and friendly for our athletes to run. So yeah. And also, again, going with themes, you want to do theme type stuff. So jackpot in Vegas, you want to show girls, you want pictures of that. And I'm sure some races want to kind of highlight that for a smaller race that oh, we do have some more elite athletes that come to the race. So a lot of, I mean, a lot of us are fans of the sport. So we get a chance to run with some of the elites. It's always a nice experience. So, and I think the main thing is again, the, um, letting the, the photographer know what what they're looking for so that when we go out there we we have an idea of what to shoot and what to look for out there on the course brilliant thank you so much kevin great great photographs um so yeah excellent um actually kevin thank you so much you reminded me that uh, um when i was talking about visual cues and and how how visual then i completely missed that uh, of course for those of us who don't have a site um, then, then that's not the case. So, uh, um, so I should have mentioned that. So, Kevin, thank you for reminding me. Um, yeah. oh, okay, beautiful. Um, Emily, do you want to uh, um, share some of your pictures and your ideas? Yeah, um, let me just make sure I can get it on the screen. Okay, can you see what I'm looking at? There we go. Yeah. Okay. Well, so I think that what I've learned is that what people and what runners are looking for are themselves. So if they're looking to register for a race and they're maybe not even looking at photos, like they're looking at them subconsciously, but like, or they're looking at them consciously, but they're looking for people that look like themselves and, or they're seeing someone that maybe inspires them. 
So a lot of times, and I think that was introduced to me by a race director here in Georgia, but especially here in the Southeast where those wide vistas aren't as prominent as like Montana and Phoenix where these two are, which is wonderful. It's a whole different, it's a different type of uh, photography. Um, we, we really focus a lot on like the people in the races um, and the environment. So let me just, for instance, um, this is what we, a lot of what we're in, we're in cloud cover or we're in uh, tree canopy, um, just very luscious green landscapes. Um, but a lot of it is like finding that person that looks like you to get you to register for that race, because they're like, if they can do it, I can do it. Um, so just getting in the diversity of individuals. So, um, and sh kind of showcasing the emotion, uh, at various different, oh, and the, and the, the feet picks as well <laughs> of seeing, seeing what the race will do to your feet at the end, I think is always, uh, a helpful situation. Um, I like to capture humor as well to make sure that we know a lot of these races are 50 to hundred miles. And so, uh, they don't really quite understand what they might be getting themselves into. Um, and then also the family aspect. So just kind of showing, I don't know, the love and support of the community that we kind of talked about earlier um at western states and the finish line photos um kind of like the authenticity over perfection so not necessarily needing to uh shoot at the finish line the whole time but really getting out there and kind of telling the story of the entire race and and all of the individuals that are there racing hmm. very cool excellent thank you emily um yeah that's a really good point authenticity against you know the perfection um, and uh, um, I think that's a, 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 another really good point. Um, so um, uh, Corinne has got a question for us. So how does a race director balance giving you a brief with also allowing you to use your own artistic and creative freedom? So that's, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. I, I, I wonder if you've, uh, um, I'm sure you've come across that um, um, at some point in your careers before. So uh, um, yeah, so any, anybody has, uh, um, uh, has a response for Corinne on that one, then feel free to chime in. I think when I get a, um, they ask us to shoot, I know, get certain things. I always, I try to get those first and get those out of the way and then I can go on and do the creative stuff afterwards but always definitely get the shot first get the shots you know you're going to use and then especially on long races or loop races where you see people multiple times once you get everybody then for me it's like I'm going to be creative now and I'm going to try to climb up this place or go here or try to capture some kind of like uh slow image and get some blur so that's what i would do cool anastasia you yeah i think that um i actually don't know that i've ever gotten a, like a written brief with like a specific shot list necessarily um i've been really lucky to work with people who um either know my work and know me as a person and they trust me so for the most part people just say oh we need community shots or you know we want um this specific thing captured you know like the snow or um you know this mountain range or whatever is like really special to your race um and then they just kind of put it in our hands to to get that um which i think is kind of where some of the magic happens that if you if you trust the person then you you know that their vision will be you know executed um, and so, yeah, I don't know that, I mean, a shot list would be super helpful, but I feel like sometimes when I get that, I'm, I'm kind of zoned in then to only get shots just like that, instead of just kind of looking around me and assessing the landscape and, you know, where people are going, where the light is. So yeah, more, more of like a, a general structure and then, uh, maybe let the creative do their thing. Mm -hmm. Emily, any, any more thoughts on that? I might be a strange one, but I actually work within my own shot list. I feel like I have a general shot list for most races that I shoot. Um, I kind of go in with like, here are some really like key 
prominent shots that I would like to capture, which, I mean, it kind of goes along with Anastasia. Like if, if they want community, we know what community looks like. Like we, as photographers, we know what to look for. Um, but it helps me kind of organize my thought because otherwise um, the creative side of myself is like a squirrel, you know, I'm like, Oh, here's an opportunity. Here's an okay. opportunity. But it's like, no, there is a story that does need to be told. So focus in on those shots and then kind of expand outwards from there. Got it. Got it. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we got another question from uh, Adam Fierst um, here as well. And Adam, hope you're doing well in Colorado there. Um, the, but before we get to that, um, I, I wanted to ask you guys, kind of if you're how many pictures are you um, are you shooting um, to actually get the output that you end up sending to the race so so how <laughs> many how many end up getting left behind it's, it's just something I, I again kind of off the top of my head so sorry for jumping this on you but I thought that's a probably an interesting question so um, yeah Emily do you want to start on that uh, sure. Um, I would say I am more, I probably am an undershooter compared to most people. Um, I don't like to hold the trigger. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it depends, but for like a 24 hour race, I'll deliver 2000 photos. Um, I would say on average. So I don't know if we want to get into numbers like that, but I would say that's a pretty average number that I aim for over the course of a 24 hour one. Right. So do you deliver all of those 2000 or do, do some of them End up oh yeah, that's delivered. Taken would be probably between <laughs> four and six. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. Cool. Kevin, sounds like you're in the similar similar ballpark. Yes, especially when I first started, I was just almost sad to say spray and pray and get as much as I could. But then, of course, on the other end, editing, going through all those pictures took days. Now I feel like I'm still taking like Emily said, uh, thousands of pictures, especially for the longer runs, but I'm more purposeful about it, what pictures I'm taking and how many I'm taking. If they're taking six shots of one person, I can get it down to just three or things like that. So, but yeah, we, yeah. personally, I take a lot. I used to be way worse than I am now. <laughs> Anastasia, how about yourself? Yeah, I think the only races that I really pay attention to how many photos I take um, are the 200 mile races. So, you know, those are five days of running and then uh, the before photos. Um, so when I first started, I would take between 10 and 12,000. Um, and then we have to deliver a minimum of 2000. So it was like between two and 4,000 that get delivered. Um, these days, I I'm like closer to six to 7,000, but I still deliver just as many. So, wow. but that doesn't always happen because at the rut this weekend, I took probably 8,000, but I, I just got really excited. <laughs> <laughs> and why not? And why not? Right. It, it, yeah. You love your job. What else can you do? I just, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, kind of continuing on that vein, then um, um, it, it, it kind of uh, um, it struck me listening to you that um it's it's it, is it also true like in many other things in life when you become more mindful that your creativity actually increases so so your ability to um to be able to be creative um is is you know you kind of develop that that art if you like um so it's not necessarily something that's there initially as you said it seems like you started off taking more pictures maybe um so is, is that is that true for you guys too so you know that you become more mindful and as a result your creativity your ability to spot a shot improves i think so yeah go ahead yeah. oh yeah, yeah i was just gonna say i think when i first started shooting um ultra running i just kind of i wasn't sure what was the right moment so i just kind of shot everything first was over <laughs> the years you, you kind of realize if you see a runner starting to go down, like, oh, that could be dramatic. Or, you know, if they're like sleeping in the chair, you're like, oh, they won't remember that, but they might like to see it afterwards. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think it just comes with time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, Adam's question. So, as a runner, I prefer pics of me on the course. I guess it's probably like most people. As a race director, I want to showcase the course with the runners. Um, however, an RD friend prefers to highlight runners finishing thoughts. 
So I guess that's down to the race director, I guess, and the, and the event maybe. But uh, um, yeah, Emily, you're, you're nodding your head to that. So uh, um, you've had some experience with that? Yeah, I, I think that I shifted, we, one of the race directors I've worked with, we shifted from that perspective initially of like, I want you to sit at the finish line and shoot only finish line photos um, because they want to make sure that every, every runner had a photo and I was the only photographer at the event. So that is a surefire way that every runner that is most likely going to have that at least finishes, I should say, um, is going to have a finish line photo. Um, but I think we shifted into the let's let Emily go throughout the course and get runners on the course because that's a better way to showcase the event from a marketing perspective. Mm -hmm. um, but that took like a lot of conversation and a lot of time. So I think maybe time and just just communicate you know and and communicate as creatives what is our perspective and how can we help to shift the perspective of, of the race maybe mm. yeah 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 kevin any uh, any thoughts on that question i've had race directors that wanted more finish line picks i personally not a fan of being just sitting at the finish line just because i want to be out there on the course and active and taking you know the action shots the getting the views of the course but i've also seen at least locally race directors hiring another photographer to do just the finish line photos which is awesome for me that way i don't have to worry about it and i can go out and do what i love to do and climb and run and get those pictures so gotcha anastasia any anything to add on that one uh yeah i think that um a lot of the time too i mean it's all budget dependent um but i think sometimes there's people who only do runner photography i've definitely been in that role before where you just kind of hang out in a scenic iconic spot and you get a photo of every person um which you could pull some of those pictures and use them for marketing but it doesn't give you a variety of them um so then they also have a marketing person who goes out on course and they don't have to photograph every single person but they get the landscape, the camaraderie, all of that. So um, if you are the one person, it gets a little bit tougher, uh, you know, like like Emily, like you're saying. So um, yeah, I've, I've been fortunate to work with teams. So we get the opportunity to get them at the finish line and then also out on course, so. Cool, cool. Okay, um, Adam, hope that uh, gave you some answers for the question. Um, and uh, um, Corinne, I hope we also got to, um, got to answer your, your question as well. Um, okay, we'll return to, uh, to our preset questions. So um, what are your recommendations for helping races and events attract more runners from groups that are currently underrepresented at races? Um, E.g. BIPOC, women, adaptive athletes, um, and we'll include um, blind athletes there too, um, youth and elders, LGBTQ community, et cetera. Um, so we kind of touched on that a little bit already, but uh, um, but I wonder if we could uh, um, kind of focus in on, on that one. Um, so Anastasia, do you want to, uh, would you like to start on that one for us? Sure, I, I think that Emily kind of, you know, nailed it on the head. Um, we wanna see ourselves in the photos. So, you know, if you're, a little bit older um, and maybe you're scared of the terrain or whatever if you see somebody in the photo doing what you want to do and they um, look like you, you you'll feel like you belong there and i think that's one of the biggest things is sometimes you walk into these races if you don't know anybody it's it could be really scary and very vulnerable to be there um so i do believe that um you know, it, it it's super helpful to see yourself in the photos. Um, and then I think there's a lot of groups out there that already are doing that work. So if you plug yourself in with those people, um, that, you know, then you can partner with somebody on that. Yeah, so so this is groups you're thinking of in terms of people's communities. Um, that, are, that are doing that work already and so to plug in with them mm -hmm. um, and and encourage encourage people from those groups to to take part in the race or um, yeah to right. come, and do, yeah. come and join in yeah because there's people that are already um, are trying to get those underrepresented folks into 
trail yeah. running or you know into outdoors activities in general so to create that authentic relationship with them and to want to bring that to your races could be super yeah. helpful mm -hmm. yeah yeah great stuff um thank you kevin um yeah i'd love to hear your comments on this i would have to piggyback off uh, anastasia because yeah it's you want to see somebody that looks like you you want to see yourself out there so even as for me as a photographer uh starting back in 2018 at trail running i didn't see a lot of people that looked like me so it was always nice to see them on the course and i would like okay i gotta make sure i get a good picture of them so they can use it and for the race to use it so they can because again you want to see yourself so you you want to feel like it's a safe environment but also with the um achilles like the pictures i had shown to put those type of pictures out there let's people know that are looking for a race that oh this is a friendly race it's a fairly flat and non-technical race that i could run with my blind runner and it's wide enough that i can have my guy next to me and we can both run side by side and not have any issues so i think it just yeah it all comes back to what they were saying is this you you have to you want to be able to see yourself and know it's a safe place to run yeah cool Emily, any uh, any more comments on that one too? Uh, they did a great job of covering it, but generally, I think the moment that you capture any sort of image uh, that doesn't fit the traditional mold, like mold of what people think a trail runner is, you have the opportunity to reach a broader audience. So, I mean, that at this point, I think it's becoming more and more. Uh, there are more opportunities for that, and so I think uh, it falls on us as creatives as well to make sure that that's a priority in what we do at every single race um, and know that it doesn't just fall back to, or does that doesn't just contribute to marketing, um, but also like relationships as well between like races and their communities. And with like Anastasia saying, um, partnering with like local community groups, I think that's massive. Um, and I think building those relationships is ultimately what's gonna attract more people to your race. So if we can help with that as creatives, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was um, um, when I first started, um, came up with the idea for this webinar, then um, I was also thinking that, um, you know, I, I haven't been um, that long in terms of trail running, but I've been running for a number of years um, or a lot longer. <laughs> and um, uh, the, you know, it, it's typically um, uh, the photographers that you see at events were um, were, were white guys, um, and so so I was thinking about okay, I don't want to follow the same <laughs> the same example in terms of um, having inviting people who are um, who are white guys to come along and and talk about taking pictures at races, um, and so um, it was surprising actually. Uh, um, uh, how you know it's it's wonderful, Emily and Anastasia, that you're um, you know you're busy, you're taking amazing pictures. Um, Kevin, you're obviously super busy as well and taking amazing pictures. And um, uh, but it's like the um, uh, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say. It's it's like that. There's not um, there's not that many women photographers that I've seen out there. Um, there's not that many um, black guy photographers out there. Um, I haven't, I don't think I came across one black woman photographer. Um, um, you know, so it's, it's, things are changing, but, but it, it, it also seems like it takes an eternity <laughs> to, to really, uh, um, uh, to really get motion. So, so, so thank you each of you for, um, uh, for being here and agreeing to be part of this. Cause I, I, I really wanted to, as, as well as, you know, thinking about showcasing what's shown at races, I also wanted to showcase what's shown here as well. Um, and so, uh, um, so thank you so much for agreeing to be a part of this. Um, okay. So next question. Um, yeah, on the same kind of subject, um, is it better to share imagery of even a small number of diverse runners at a race in the hope that this may attract a more diverse audience? Um, and so, yeah, that's been a kind of a, um, uh, um, a, a difficult subject. I know talking to some race directors that they've um, uh, they've kind of been scared about uh, uh, 
um, you know, a bit concerned. Are we doing the right thing? You know, if we if we show um, if we show one one black person or um, one person who's maybe um, not a similar kind of shape to a to traditional trail runner. Um, then you know, are we doing the right thing by showing by showing a picture of that those kind of people, um, or those yeah distinct people from uh, um, uh, from the kind of the rest of the participants, if you like? Um, yeah. So I wondered if you guys had any thoughts on on that and um, and what you felt was respectful um, and the best way to uh, to deal with that that, that issue. I think yes. Um... But I also think it comes down to communication too. Um, I mean, you can even chat with the runners that you're taking pictures of and say, hey, like we want to use this on the website. How do you feel about it? But I mean, in my opinion, we're trying to make trail running accessible to as many people as possible. And if part of that is kind of, you know, showcasing, even if it is one or two black people that are running um, or an older woman or, or something like that, I think that I think it's worth it. But um, I'm not sure what my other fellow creatives would say on that. So, <laughs> yeah, thanks, Emily. Yeah, Kevin, any um, any thoughts on that subject? I think it's definitely worth uh, showcasing uh, some diversity. Uh, I think it's just again how you use it. You're not exploiting it, right. but you know, using it in a respectful way. And but yeah, I don't I don't see why it would be an issue to you know promote. Uh, diversity. And I would just do it as if you're posting anything else, I wouldn't make a like a huge deal out of it. Just no, this is these are runners who happen to be black, who happen to be blind, who happen to be female. Um, but yeah, I mean, people are going to see it, they're going to know, okay, yeah, that's a black runner. You don't have to be like, oh, this is what we're doing. And mm. yeah. Cool, cool. Thank you. Anastasia, any more thoughts on that one? Um, I don't think so. I think we, you know, between the last question and this one, we've covered it. I do think um, it's important, you know, it's important if it's important to the race director, I suppose. So if they're, if they want more people um, from those underrepresented groups in their race, make a safe environment, um, you know, and then when people have a positive experience at the race, they'll talk. So yeah. Right. So I think that's a lot of it, too. Yeah. 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 Emily, go, going back to what you said on, on that question, then, um, uh, when you say talk to the runner um, or talk to the runners, then um, is this after the event? I mean, if, if you're if you're out on course, for example, and, and, and snap a picture, then and they're gone. So so it, is that uh, um, how would you deal with that kind of situation or, or are you talking about a different situation? I mean, I would just try to find them after the race. Um, yeah. And I mean, if if that's something that is is super important, um, then yeah, I would, I would just try to find and, and make have a conversation and just yeah, like Kevin said, not make a big deal out of it, but also sometimes it's nice to just have a conversation and make sure everything's good to go on that end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. So, <laughs> a quick question. So this is either or question. So um, free images paid for by the race or the runners pay for them. Which is best and for whom? Kevin, you got a thought on that? <laughs> uh, um, I think it's easier, I guess, would be for to be included in the race. Because I think for the race, it looks good for them that, oh, we're taking care of your race photos. We we provided a photographer. We're going to give you the race photos for free. Just show up and run instead of making them have to go through and pay for race. I mean, and again, it depends on how much each the photographers are charging because everybody has their own, you know, what they're going to charge. And I try to keep mine low. Um, but again, we like you asked us about how much our equipment is. It, there's costs to this thing, so we yeah. have to charge. But you don't also don't being a runner like some of these race photos are like ridiculous. Um, but those are more of the commercial rock and roll type things that where you have to pay thirty, forty, fifty dollars for a photo. Um, 
But I also, I feel like, and again, it depends on the photographer, but if, if a race has say 200 people in it and they add additional $2 per entry, that's $400, which to the runner, that $2, they're not even going to notice. So that's I was, one way I've been kind of looking at it. I haven't really presented that to a race director to see how they feel about that idea. But I, I think that's a simple way. To, and again, that's depends on the photographer. That might not be enough for them. They might want more than that. Then obviously you would work that out. But I don't know. I think the it also depends on how long you're going to be out on the course and how much the race director is going to pay you to be out there and photo. So I guess it's a either or type thing. I don't know. I don't have the exact answer, I guess. <laughs> no, sure, sure. Emily, um, any, any thoughts on that one? I think it depends on the size of the race. Um, most of the races here in the Southeast that I work with, um, they're relatively small, like 200 ish runners. Um, and so all of them do purchase the photos or the race directors purchase the photos ahead of time. Um, and it kind of just serves as an organic marketing tool because then, you know, all these runners are downloading the photos immediately, like three days after the race. And then, you know, that's free marketing for the race and it makes the runners feel like super valued. But I think in an instance where the race becomes thousands of runners or like 500 runners even, um, and there's a team of photographers out there, I think it makes absolutely like more sense to have the runners pay for the images um, just because there is a wider variety. Um, and maybe there are, like Anastasia said, there's situations where there's um, runner photographers and they're getting photos of every single runner. So yeah, rather than just like a, a race variety. So I think it depends on the size. Yeah, good point. Anastasia, any thoughts on your uh, own? Um, I haven't, um, the only races I've done where the photos have been included are just really local Missoula races. Um, otherwise it has been, um, you know, they purchased the photos after the fact. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure. Um, I feel like I had somebody ask me what it would be like, and I guess it, it would be tough to, to put a price to it because then if you've done it where you have photo sales and then you move to photos being included, you kind of have to make up for that revenue. So I think that's probably how you would estimate it. And I think to race directors, it can probably sometimes look like, you know, that's a lot of money. <laughs> so that's tough. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Okay, this is uh, last question. And <laughs> what is your vision of the future for the sport? In terms of uh, photography and trail running. And uh, um, I guess I touched on live streaming already. So uh, um, and is, uh, um, is, is live streaming something that that you guys are interested in um, um is that something that you're thinking of including within your portfolio or um uh yeah yeah any uh, um, um any ideas I, I don't know if you can uh, if you can share something that uh, is still in the works but uh, um if you have any thoughts on that that would be great to hear uh i don't know that i would uh, I, I would be interested to be on a live streaming team maybe but I don't know that I have it in me to like organize an entire thing like that. Um, but I think that um, now this is just personal opinion, but I think talking to um, quite a few runners, <clears throat> the more that it becomes commercialized, people are looking to the more grassroots, smaller races where maybe there isn't as much media or maybe there isn't live streaming. Live streaming makes them more accessible for people to feel like they're a part of the race and maybe get um, like a preview of what the course looks like. But I do feel like as the time goes on that people will want to look at like fun traditions at races or something that makes them stand out or be really special. Um, yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of how I see it. And maybe um, maybe that's just what I would prefer. Hmm. OK, great, great. Emily, how about how about your thoughts on this one? Uh... I'm I'm with Anastasia. Yeah, I I don't think I I've been asked to figure out how to live stream like even a, just a smaller race, and it, it's absolutely terrifying. 
Um, I, I have no idea. I, well, I have seen kind of a little bit of behind the scenes of what it takes to put on a really amazing live stream. Uh, and that it's just a whole nother world. Um, we really, I think I'm lucky in sitting behind a nice little camera, but when you get into the live stream world, that's a whole different ball game. So maybe, maybe one day we'll learn a little bit more, but I'm happy where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, Western Western States, because you were you were there, weren't you? So um, that was uh, um, yeah. I mean, their their live stream um, is uh, is pretty amazing, and and their viewership, you know, for that live stream is also pretty amazing as well. So um, that that's been a really kind of key indicator for me of seeing the growth of interest or seemingly interest in live streaming um, is uh, um, is races like that. Um, yeah, Kevin, how about yourself? No, I agree with the ladies. It's that live streaming is just a whole nother level. Um, yeah, that's just, that's the whole production. And I think the ones that do it, like Jamil and those guys, they do an excellent job. But yeah, nothing that I would ever want to maybe be a part of every now and then, but not doing it myself. And also like Western States, the one thing I would like to somehow do is I saw that they were like taking photos and they had somebody right there with the iPad that they could get the photos out right away, which is nice. And now with cameras, now with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, you can, I've done it where I just download right to my phone, do a quick edit and send it to whatever sponsor or athlete I'm following or whatever. So yeah. that would be, I think everything's right now. That's just the world, Instagram and everything. Everybody wants to see what's going on right now. So that's why I think live streaming is great. And that's why the faster you can get your photos out and which is another thing is when taking photos is trying to get it in camera so you don't have to worry about cropping and editing. You can just download and get it out to whoever you, or to whatever you want to get it out to. Yeah, yeah. Instant gratification. That's uh, that's the way our society is these days, isn't it? And it's like, I have to wait two minutes for a picture? Right. What's going on? <laughs> Crazy stuff. Okay. Um, Actually, Kim, you just kind of reminded me of something else that uh, um, had been on my mind that I'd missed. Um, so have you been in a situation where um, uh, where you you have your you're paid by a sponsor to to target an athlete um, um, in terms of their their appearance in a race or whatever? Um, and but have has any athlete like ever come to you and said, Look, look, I, I, I really don't want to be featured that much, <laughs> or you know something like that. So, so have you had a like a, a, a kind of a, um, a corporate tussle or whatever in terms of uh, um, uh, between between an athlete and a sponsor? Um, don't have to mention any names, but but just just uh, interesting stories. I've worked with a uh, couple of athletes. I work with Corey a lot, so yeah. whoever his sponsors are. That's why I was at um, Western was to kind of help out with um, the North Face. So it wasn't just him. It was all their athletes. So and that's, again, being able to hurry up and get those photos to their person. That way they can get out on social media. But I never had an issue where somebody had said, no, don't take my picture or I don't want any part of that. Everything's been everybody's been, you know, very cooperative. Uh, the sponsors have always been nice. I haven't had any issues where sponsors like just over the top. Um, yeah. yeah. That's that's reassuring to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Anastasia, how, how about yourself? You've, you've had the similar experience? Yeah, and I think the, the runners also have an understanding. It's probably in their contract that they probably can't really say no, you know? So, and honestly, if, you know, if they're a sponsored athlete or, you know, let's say they're in a top 10 of Western states, they pay zero attention to media, which honestly is, is really impressive because I feel like I would be really overstimulated, <laughs> but yeah, they're just like, they're, they're zoned in, they're focused on what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and you know, we don't insert ourselves and ask them to do something that they're not already doing. Um, yeah. at least I don't, I, I have never done that. So yeah. So it, no, they they've been great. Cool, cool. Emily, any any uh, anything interesting to add to that? 
No, I, I haven't really worked directly with one athlete before, so I haven't run into that uh, problem just yet. <laughs> okay. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, we've reached the uh, reached the end of our time here. Um, uh, thank you so much, everybody out there, for uh, um, for your questions and attention. And uh, um, yeah. Big thanks to Emily, to Anastasia, and to Kevin for uh, taking the time to uh, to be on this webinar. <clears throat> Excuse me, and uh, for sharing your ideas um, in terms of how how races can uh, um, can grow and supercharge their events, but uh, but also do it in, in a respectful, responsible way. Um, so really appreciate your input. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, um, yeah, excited. Um, um, Emily, I know you first reached out to me about the conference, and uh, um, so you're not going to be able to. Um, to, to see us in Knoxville, are you? I don't think I will be able to, but I'm there in spirit. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> cool. Um, and Kevin, I think you're, you're doing something with, um, with Corey, I think, at the same time, aren't you, at that time? Actually, we're not doing it now. We were. Um, he was going to go for the FKT for the Appalachian Trail. Yeah. Which was supposed to start tomorrow, but um, we're going to put it off. So I may be available after check okay. back with you okay okay all right cool cool well let, let me know reach out and uh, um let me know what uh what how that turns up and uh, um anastasia i know it's a little um how far is it from montana to t t to tennessee i guess it's a little ways isn't it yeah a little bit a little bit yeah 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 <laughs> okay <laughs> well if you happen to be in tennessee um we'd love to see you so uh, um, yeah, thank you so much, everybody out there. Um, we'll be uh, uh, sending, sharing, recording out for uh, for this webinar um, uh, tomorrow. Uh, and uh, um, this is the last in our series for 2024. Um, it's, uh, wow, the year has gone by so quickly. I don't know where it went to, but, uh, um, um, oh, Adam Fierce says, isn't Wardian doing the AT now? Oh. I believe so. I believe so. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um, yeah. So um, thank you so much, uh, um, everybody, for out, being out there um, to Marathon Printing Inc. for um, our presenting sponsor. And uh, um, take care out there. Look after each other and uh, um, look after the planet. But, yeah. Take care. Be well. <laughs>